Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. The Army refuses to let Christian soldiers opt out of transgender training. UK threatens to close a Jewish school for not teaching three-year-olds about transgenderism. And a Catholic bishop bars homosexuals from taking communion. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. The United States Army is refusing to allow Christian soldiers to opt out of government-mandated transgender training. WND.com reports that on June 30th of last year, 2016, then Secretary of Defense Ash Carter under the Obama administration announced that so-called transgender individuals should be allowed to openly serve in the U.S. Armed Forces. As a result, the Department of Defense then directed commanders to conduct face-to-face -face transgender awareness training for all military members and civilians who supervise military personnel. So far, the DOD has provided medical protocol and constructed a commander's training handbook to ensure that homosexual service members uh, may begin to change their gender markers in the so-called Defense Eligibility Enrollment System, or DEERS. So you can tell the Army, if you're male, that you want female printed on your military ID card. But if homosexual service members are afforded the opportunity to openly serve and even identify as the opposite sex, what about Christian service members? Are we allowed to openly serve and identify as Christians? who don't want to be, by the way, subjected to homosexual training that is antithetical to our faith. Ostensibly not, writes World Net Daily, given the fact that several Christian soldiers from a Nashville Army Reserve unit were forced to attend transgender training this year. On June 23rd of 2017, in the 304th military police battalion, which is part of the Army Reserves, they were directed and all soldiers were directed to attend mandatory transgender policy briefings. By the way, several soldiers from the unit who do identify as Christian and believe that homosexuality is a sin, condemned in the Bible, they opposed the idea of receiving that mandatory training. In fact, one of the Christian soldiers sought counsel from a chaplain, a liberal chaplain, Captain Eric Barrett, asking for a religious accommodation. So the soldier goes to the chaplain, hey, I don't want to take this training. Chaplain says, put it in your sock. You've got to take the training. Well, that's not very helpful from the liberal pro-homosexual chaplain. Now, according to one of the Christian soldiers who is unnamed at this point, that unit chaplain who also is allegedly endorsed by the Southern Baptist Association, not only refused the young soldier's request for religious accommodation, but also the chaplain conducted the homosexual policy briefing. This is the same chaplain who informed the soldier that he and the commander didn't believe that opting out of transgender training was necessary because that would never violate a Christian soldier's sincerely held beliefs. In fact, here now is a copy of the email because after getting rejected by the chaplain, the soldier wrote to his commanding officer. What did the commanding officer reply? Here's a quote. Dear soldier, name redacted, the army has directed that all soldiers receive training on its transgender policy. While I appreciate your religious beliefs, I cannot release you from receiving information on this policy since it is Department of the Army directed. Signed, Lieutenant Colonel Kim Wilson, 
304th MP Battalion Commander. And that's the news. Our thanks to WND.com and Dr. Sonny Hernandez who reported this story. On a future show, we're gonna interview Dr. Sonny Hernandez, who is the Air Force chaplain who is monitoring all these things in his private capacity as a civilian pastor. He is strongly critical of the Army's homosexual and transgender policy, but not just the policy, but the fact that it's being forced upon Christians without letting Christians opt out. Let's take a moment and discern the spirits. In this story, we have Soldiers showing up to work, doing their job as soldiers. But then we have the Obama administration who under Ash Carter mandated this so-called transgender policy. And now the training is being conducted. One guy wants to opt out. There's a chaplain, Pharisee, who says, no, you gotta not only receive the training, but I'm gonna teach you how to be a homosexual transgender. Really, the chaplain's gonna do this? Those are the humans in the story. Where are the spirits in the story? We discern the demonic spirit of hypocrisy in the chaplain, Eric Barrett, who pretends to be a Southern Baptist, pretends to believe the Bible. And yet, with his hypocrisy, uh, you know what? I encourage you, Eric, just go read Matthew 23. Just read Matthew 23. Jesus calls out the Pharisees and condemns them for their hypocrisy. But not only that, we discern the Spirit of God on this young soldier who is standing up for his religious freedom and saying, I'm going to resist tyranny, and even if they punish me, I'm going to try to opt out. I'm gonna request a religious accommodation and shame on that commander for refusing it. Because the law allows you, commander, to grant that religious exemption even for other things that are army directed, there's a federal law which is higher than the army directive. And the federal law says you can grant a religious exemption. The Bible says this in Romans chapter 14, he who doubts is condemned because if he eats, because he does not eat from faith for whatever is not from faith is sin. Let's pray about this. Father in heaven, we pray for and from a clear conscience. And we ask you to forgive our sins and to heal us. But whatever we do that is not in faith is sin to us. And Father, don't allow the government to force us to sin. If the government is going to countermand God, we will obey God and we will disobey men. And Father, we pray for courage among those members of the armed forces that believe and follow Jesus Christ as King of Kings that they will have the courage to defy the homosexual agenda. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, the UK is threatening to close a Jewish school that won't teach transgenderism to three-year-olds. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. How is your marriage doing? I want to tell you about an exciting new four-part video DVD Bible study series on God's plan for marriage. In this video series, we team up with marriage and family ministry expert, Vince Dacchioli. There are a lot of things that get in the way of uh, our ability to have a healthy marriage, but with the way God intended it, he always wanted us to see his view of our relationship together. So everything we do when we talk about marriage or whether we're talking to men or whether we're talking to pastors and leaders, it all centers around this idea of vision. It's very important that we understand who God is and our relationship with Him is right in order for us to be able to live out really and truly Ephesians. And that also informs our role as men, how to love our wives. We can't really exactly. love them unless we understand the love of God. Exactly. So if you just think about love, you, we tend to think that love is an emotion. It's more uh, something that I feel, whereas the true definition of love, the way Jesus intended it, is, is not just an emotion, but it's, it's, a, it's charity, it's what I do. You know, to the degree that I am able to see my wife or my spouse through his eyes, that determines everything in my relationship. Yeah. And we go through the scriptures in four different parts. Part one is God's design for man and woman. 
Part two is godly roles for husband and wife. Three is sex and intimacy within godly marriage. And also God's plan for divorce. You want to have this important four-part video series available for a suggested donation of $30 if you call our toll-free prayer line at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Or visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. You too can have a godly marriage. Defending your religious freedom, here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. The government in Great Britain is now threatening to close a Jewish school. Why? Because the Jewish school followed its own belief in the Torah and refused to teach three-year-olds about homosexuality and transgenderism. LifeSite News reports that an Orthodox Jewish primary school is somehow violating the law by not teaching their own three-year-olds about gender reassignment and sexual orientation. This after a government inspection determined that they were failing to comply with the government's orders. The school is called Vishnitz Girls School and they teach, by the way, 212 girls as young as three years old and as old as 11. An unannounced May 10th government inspection showed up at the school and determined that the Jewish school is not in compliance with 2010 so-called equality legislation Boy, they don't have any religious opt-out in Britain? This is shocking to me. Uh, but they said, the government said, it's detrimental to the spiritual, moral, and social and cultural development of children to not explain gender reassignment or sexual orientation to little religious kids, the report said. Really? I think it would be detrimental to their spiritual health to homosexualize them. But, here's a quote from the report, quote, the school's approach means that pupils are shielded from learning about certain differences between people such as sexual orientation. Leaders and proprietors recognize the requirement to teach about the protected characteristics as set out in the Equality Act of 2010, but acknowledge that they do not teach pupils about all the protected characteristics particularly those relating to gender reassignment and sexual orientation. This means that pupils have a limited understanding of the different lifestyles and partnerships that individuals may choose in present day society." End quote. Well, that's the government's view that the Jewish school is failing. Here is a <coughs> copy of the school's mission. Also stated in the report, the mission of the Jewish school is to quote, deliver a high-class education that is firmly based on the principles of the Torah, you know, the Bible, the Old Testament, and combined with a strong shul curriculum to enable all pupils and become productive and upstanding citizens, end quote. In other words, they have a religious mission to teach kids a religious viewpoint. Would that include the chapters from Leviticus that condemn homosexuality? I think it might. By the way, the school does not have a website, but there is an analysis here from Andrea Williams, chief executive of Christian Concern, who told LifeSite News, quote, this is a very stark example of the state imposing an LGBT ideology that is completely at odds with the school's religious ethos. This is a private Jewish school for young girls, yet it must be told, it's being told that it must reinforce a view of the world with which it radically disagrees and which is damaging to the children. The state's education regulator seems to have little time for religious or parental freedom. The school is gonna to have to close if it doesn't change, says UK Media and Gay Star News. And that's the news. Our thanks to LifeSite News for that report. You know, this is shocking that the government is coming into religious schools now. It's bad enough that they go into public schools and they promote sodomy to children in public schools. But now they're gonna go into religious schools? I'm saying this as an evangelical Christian, that I would defend the Jewish Orthodox schools' right to opt out 
to disobey human government and obey God as they should do. And there is a demonic spirit of persecution. In fact, it's anti-Semitic. You Nazis in the Great Britain government who want to go into a Jewish school, that is comparable to Hitler in my view. The spirit of anti-Semitism is demonic and we must pray against that. By the way, the Bible, in fact, the Torah, which they teach in that Jewish school, says this in Genesis chapter one. So God created man in his own image and in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, God created them. Let's pray about this. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we do pray in Jesus' name against the spirit of anti-Semitism, against the anti-biblical view that is being forced upon little children. And Father, we pray for the innocence of these children, that they will not be violated in their minds by government forces that would use the, the power of the government sword to come in and violate the minds of these innocent children. We pray for their protection in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, a Catholic bishop is excommunicating homosexuals. Giving you a megaphone in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. How can you discern the thoughts in your own mind from the thoughts that come to you from the Holy Spirit or from angels or from invisible demons? I'm Dr. Chaps and you've seen us on this show talk about the gift of discerning of spirits. Maybe you know that I wrote my PhD dissertation entitled How to See the Holy Spirit and Angels and Demons. And it's all about this important topic of receiving the gift of discerning of spirits. How can you discern the thoughts that come to you? How do you know to learn to hear the voice of God and discern that from the demonic voice which tempts us to sin? Well, this is an important skill and it will change your ministry. It'll change your life, which is why we've created now not just a book, but a 17 part video Bible study on a four disc DVD set that we would like to send to you and your church and your family and your small group. This important Bible study series goes through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. How did Jesus discern the spirits? How did the Apostle Paul discern the spirits? What does the Old Testament say about demons and the Holy Spirit and angels? When you learn to discern, it will transform your life and your ministry. Please visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org and get this important video resource. Or call us toll free at 866-Obey-God and for a suggested donation of $99, we'll give you the entire 17 part Bible study series for just $99. And if you order today, we'll throw in the book for free. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org or call us toll free at 866-Obey-God. Get this important Bible study series for your family. Call today. He is the intersection of church and state. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. Our last story today comes from The Blaze who reports, there is a Roman Catholic bishop who is writing decrees barring homosexual couples from receiving Holy Communion and even funeral rites unless they repent. The Bishop of the Catholic Diocese of Springfield, Illinois is now under some criticism from the LGBT left because he is actually implementing Roman Catholic doctrine which bars individuals in homosexual marriages from receiving Holy Communion or funeral rites unless they repent. A copy of his decree was obtained by the Washington Post 
And the bishop's name is Thomas John Paprocki, who wrote that members of the clergy, as well as other employees or representatives of the diocese, should not participate in or assist with homosexual marriages, nor should diocesan property of facilities be ever used to host them. So you can't have a gay wedding in a Catholic church, he says. The Catholic church, by the way, teaches that marriage should be between one man and one woman. Paprocki, pictured here, also wrote that individuals living publicly in a homosexual marriage should not receive Holy Communion. Here's a quote from the bishop. Pastors aware of such situations should address these concerns privately with the persons in such circumstances, calling them to conversion and advising them not to present themselves for Holy Communion until they have been restored to communion with the church through the sacrament of reconciliation." End quote. In other words, they should repent before they come to communion. You know, the wine and the bread, the sacrament, no sacrament for you until you repent. He says that if a person is publicly living in a homosexual marriage, they're in danger of death. But they may only be given Holy Communion, quote, if he or she expresses repentance for his or her sins, end quote. Bishop Paprocki added that individuals in homosexual marriages should be denied funeral rights unless they have repented before death. In the document, Paprocki explained that it is his responsibility as the diocesan bishop, quote, to guide the people of God entrusted to me with charity but without compromising the truth. Finally, I remind all who exercise a ministry within the church that while being clear and direct about what the church teaches, our pastoral ministry must always be respectful, compassionate, and sensitive to all our brothers and sisters in faith, as was the ministry of Christ Jesus, who is the good shepherd and our everlasting model for ministry. They are also warned that culpable violation of any of these norms can be punished with a just penalty." End quote. Well, of course, liberal media outlets and homosexual activ activist groups are criticizing the decree, but conservative Christian observers are pleasantly surprised to find a bishop with a backbone who is enforcing church doctrine. And that's the news. Our thanks to, who gave us this report? This was The Blaze. Our thanks to The Blaze for that report. Let's take a moment and discern the spirits. There is a spirit of apostasy in this age. And when I say apostasy, it means backsliding. It means people who used to be Christians are sliding into sin. And this doesn't affect just individuals like some individuals choose to go into drunkenness or choose to go into theft or choose to go into adultery. But that kind of backsliding is now becoming institutional as homosexual marriage has been legalized across America. That's just a fact. Where are the spirits in this story? I discern upon Bishop Paprocki, the spirit of Almighty God, that when the enemy, the devil, comes in like a flood, God is raising up a standard. And that standard has been articulated by Bishop Paprocki in such a way that it, it, it's refreshing and it represents the standard of Jesus Christ against sin. And to forgive the sin of those who repent. Is repentance mandatory or optional before forgiveness is extended? The bishop believes and I believe it is mandatory. The Bible says this in 1 Corinthians 11, you shouldn't be taking communion if you're in sin. I'm just gonna read a few verses here, starting in 27. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat the bread and drink the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body.
Let's take a short break. When we come back, I'll have a word to conclude the show. How can you discern the thoughts in your own mind from the thoughts that come to you from the Holy Spirit or from angels or from invisible demons? I'm Dr. Chaps, and you've seen us on this show talk about the gift of discerning of spirits. Maybe you know that I wrote my PhD dissertation entitled, How to See the Holy Spirit and Angels and Demons. And it's all about this important topic of receiving the gift of discerning of spirits. How can you discern the thoughts that come to you? How do you know to learn to hear the voice of God and discern that from the demonic voice which tempts us to sin? Well, this is an important skill and it will change your ministry. It'll change your life, which is why we've created now not just a book, but a 17-part video Bible study on a four-disc DVD set that we would like to send to you and your church and your family and your small group. This important Bible study series goes through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. How did Jesus discern the spirits? How did the Apostle Paul discern the spirits? What does the Old Testament say about demons and the Holy Spirit and angels? When you learn to discern, it will transform your life and your ministry. Please visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, and get this important video resource. Or call us toll free at 866 Obey God, and for a suggested donation of $99, we'll give you the entire 17 part Bible study series for just $99. And if you order today, we'll throw in the book for free. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, or call us toll free at 866 Obey God. Get this important Bible study series for your family. Call today. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Thank you for watching. Please contribute when you visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. Hit the donate button and give the best you can. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 11, there is one who scatters and yet increases more. There's also one who withholds more than it is right, but it leads to poverty. The generous soul will be made rich, but he who waters will also be watered himself. God bless you in Jesus' name. We'll see you next time. Today, I want to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Would you sign that petition with me? Let's take action today. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.